guys, here's truly Kevin Grace reporting to you from Los Angeles, California. I'm at Evergreen Cemetery paying my respects to the first black male licensed pilot here in the United States. His name is James Herman Banning. And in 1932, he and Thomas C. Allen flew from Los Angeles to Long Island. And it took them about 21 days because every time they landed, they had to raise money. And the plane that they um, flew in was made from parts in the junkyard. But they wound up doing it. So they were the first uh, black pilots to travel coast to coast. Uh, in 1933, the following year, he was at an air show in San Diego. And he was the pilot in a bi uh, bi-wing plane and it was some type of naval pilot that was flying the plane and wanted to show off and um, he did some move that um, put the plane into a tailspin and uh, unfortunately he wound up passing away and uh, age 33 he's a young young man and uh, anyway he's buried here it looks like the plaque is somewhat recent but I'm glad there is a plaque here and I wanted to give him some respect. A lot of people don't know him. So that's why I'm doing this vlog. But he's buried right here. It says Fly with Banning, James Herman Banning. 1899-1933. And uh, this is what he looked like. And this is uh, the plane that he had. As you can see, it says on the side, fly with banning but anyway he's buried not far from actor um eddie anderson who played rochester on the jack benny show and not also not far from here is uh another actress louise devers so um just wanted to let you know so if you do come here pay your respects check them out as well and check out the vlogs I did if you like this video please click subscribe down below and feel free to leave any comments this week's episode volume 1 episode 5 overviewing the adventure of the flying hobos the first black men in America to fly from sea to shining sea Banning was born on November 5th 1900 in Canton Oklahoma Territory Oklahoma did not become a state until seven years later. His father, Riley, became the owner of 160 acres of land near Kingfisher, Oklahoma in December 1900 during the Homestead Act. Banning attended the schoolhouse built by his parents on his family's property. James graduated from Faber High School in Guthrie in 1918. He began studying electrical engineering at Iowa State College in 1919. While in college, Banning owned and operated the J.H. Banning Auto Repair Shop in Ames from 1922 to 1928. James rode on his first aircraft in 1920 at a traveling air circus in Iowa. This inspired him to begin taking flight lessons from a former World War I U.S. Army aviator Raymond Fisher at this flying field in Des Moines, Iowa. Banning earned both his mechanic certificate and pilot's license number 1324 in 1926. He was the first black aviator to earn a license from the U.S. Department of Commerce. Banning accepted a job from William J. Powell as a flight instructor and chief pilot at the Bessie Coleman Aero Club Aviation School for African Americans in Los Angeles, California. In 1932, James eventually meets mechanic Thomas Cox Allen, who was interested in flying across the nation due to hearing there is a $1,000 prize, nearly $19,000 in 2020. By this time, the Great Depression was in full effect, and the Bessie Coleman Aero Company, the parent company of William Powell's Bessie Coleman's Aero Club Aviation School, has folded. Banning felt compelled to at least give it a try. While Banning was the pilot, Allen was the navigator for the expedition. Thomas carefully plotted the route to ensure they landed in black communities to receive support for their travels. This support was heavily needed since they only had $25, $440 in 2020 when they began their journey from Los Angeles, California. They assembled their famous orange and black Alexander Eagle Rock biplane with a sputtering 14-year-old Curtis OXX-6 engine. This infamous aircraft had unreliable instruments, including the compass, which was off by 30 degrees. Due to this poor instrumentation, they could not fly higher than 200 feet in most parts of the country. 
Their voyage commenced on September 18, 1932 from California. The duo was stranded for days in New Mexico due to a dark cloudy storm. The clouds were so dark and thick, neither aviator could even see the aircraft's wingtips. This storm also destroyed their instrumentation, so the duo had to scrounge up money to continue. Due to this, they began marketing themselves as the Flying Hobos to gain media attention via the local and national newspapers. They solicited small donations, a warm meal, a place to stay overnight, and money for a tank of gas from the individuals they met at each of the towns that they landed at along the way. Donors would inscribe their names on the wing of their plane, which Banning and Allen called the Gold Book. As they made their way across the United States, stopping at some 20-plus communities, 65 contributors signed their name into the Gold Book, and with each takeoff, the hopes and blessings of their donors soared along with them. As word of their flight attempt made it into the local black press, radio and newspapers began to report their progress, drawing people to watch for their anticipated arrival. By the time the Flying Hobos made it to St. Louis, thousands of bystanders were ready to greet them. In Pittsburgh, with increasing press coverage and election day approaching, Democratic Party officials enlisted Banning and Allen to publicize Franklin Roosevelt's presidential campaign by dropping some 15,000 leaflets supporting the Democratic ticket along with their flight over the state of Pennsylvania. In exchange, the campaign funded the rest of the flight and the men's expenses as well as the cost of care for the flight-worn Eagle Rock plane on its return trip to California. On October 9th, after an arduous 21-day journey, Banning and Allen completed the flight, landing at Curtis Airfield in Valley Stream, Long Island. The journey accrued around 41 hours and 37 minutes and had a total distance of 3,300 miles. Upon their arrival, New York City Mayor Jimmy Walker gave the duo keys to the city and a parade in their honor in Harlem. Shortly after Banning completed the flight, he wrote an article for the Pittsburgh Courier entitled, The Day I Sprouted Wings, in which he described his first solo flight in a plane he had assembled with his own two hands. The Cotton Club in Harlem had performances by Duke Ellington and Cab Calloway to celebrate and honor the two. Three months after his historic transcontinental flight on February 5, 1933, Banning returned to Los Angeles, California. James attempted to rent an airplane so that he can participate in the San Diego air show. Banning was denied because of his race. James instead participated as a passenger, sitting in the front cockpit with a white Navy pilot at the controls. The plane was in a steep climb when its engine stalled and the relatively inexperienced pilot was unable to gain control of the plane. This resulted in the aircraft crashing in front of hundreds of spectators, killing both men. Banning was 34 years old at the time of his death, but the legacy of flight that he left behind still lives on. Allen would go on to live until the age of 82 and pass away on September 13, 1989. What did you think of the journey of the gentleman in this video? Could you even think of doing the same in your car today?